so good. God bless you. You can be seated today. Amen. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be at Peace Tabernacle on a Wednesday night. I'm thankful for my health. Amen. I'm thankful for my health. Amen. You know, I don't know about you, but when I check my blood sugar and it says 98, I get excited. Amen. That means it's good. That means I'm healthy as a horse. As the old saying goes. It means my wife's going to have to put up with me just a little bit longer. Amen. Praise God. I've eaten salad more this last couple, last week than I have in probably my lifetime. But it still don't taste like steak. But I'm thankful for the Lord helping us through it. Amen. And uh, I'll be honest, I, I feel better. I feel, I feel blessed. I, the Lord's working. There are those having dreams, those that are waking up fighting devils. And amen. And, and I'm not worried about it. I never worry about the enemy. I, I don't. In fact, I'm more worried about carnal saints than I am the enemy. I have more trouble with carnal saints than I do the enemy any day of the week. Well, praise God. That's the truth. And because uh, I know who's got him in check. You see, when he visits your house, you just rebuke him in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I learned a long time ago, thanks to my father, you know, what you do when the devil visits your house, you get the bottle of anointing oil out. And you say, well, I don't have a bottle of anointing oil. You find the best vegetable oil, olive oil, whatever you got. Amen. You ought to go buy you some good anointing oil. Go to the Christian bookstore and have you some on your shelf. We always kept a bottle of olive oil around. But Dad would go through the house. I plead the blood of Jesus. Devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You have no dominion over my house. You have... Hey, you know, I, that stirred a young man up when I was a little guy. That let me know, hey, no devil's welcome around here. Amen. Our children need to hear us doing spiritual warfare. Amen. Now, tomorrow, I don't know, did you announce peanut brittle? Peanut brittle, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, 0900. Let's go military. But I'm asking all the ladies that can be here. Let's be here at 0900. Amen. We've already got 35 orders from, well, from the outside. Just from putting an ad in the paper, I believe. We put an ad in the paper. Somebody came by the office today saying, hey, are you open for business? And I was really tempted. I wanted to say, what do you want, baptism or Holy Ghost? <laughs> We're always open for business. I'll baptize you right now. <laughs> Praise God. So we've got that going on tomorrow. And uh, we're praying that uh, we can continue to raise funds. We're wanting to, to remodel our ladies' bathroom. Amen. And uh, I'm, I'm about ready to do a little facelift in the sanctuary. Just put a fresh coat of paint on stuff. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Salome, for fixing our baptistry area now that we got our screen in there he fixed the corners of it he's been working on that somebody came to me and said brother bumgarner i want to put ceiling tiles in the church and so we may be putting some new ceiling tiles new lighting in the sanctuary amen <laughs> praise god so i'm thankful tonight that uh, you have a burden this is your church amen this is your house and so when you get a burden someone comes to me and says brother bumgarner i have a burden for a certain area and I want to give that. I will never uh, tell you no. And I will allow you to give to that. And I will make sure that what you give to that goes to that. Amen. And you can be reassured. Amen. I, I think that's something that you need to be reassured of. Amen. That what you give to is where your money goes. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Our bus, our van is running. Amen. Our young people used it here recently. I, I heard the air condition works pretty good. And uh, I'm thankful for that. Glad that they could take it to a trip. That was a little time coming, but God helped us. And he's still helping us. 
Amen. So do I, any announcements that I am missing? We are not having children's church in the back tonight. Amen. We do have uh, soundtracks that are coming. We're going to pass them out to all of our children. Amen. And so our children can take them home and practice with them at home. Because one thing I've learned about small children, if they hear it, they learn it. Some of my favorite services is when, amen, our choir or, or group will be singing, give, I give myself away. And, and I know that we taught that to them right before Brother and Sister Fisher left three years ago. Because they sang it to Sister Fisher and Brother Fisher as a little choir. Y'all remember that? About three going on four years ago. So I have a memory like a camel. But uh, anyhow, it's exciting to hear them in the middle of church. When we're singing something, them to begin to lift their voice and say, Give myself away. And they know it. And I won't go back. They know it. And so if they learn these songs on soundtrack, they'll come up here and practice during the week. We'll have some Saturday practices. But we're going to get ready for our uh, Christmas production that we will do the Sunday before Christmas. And so that's a time to invite folks. We'll tell the story of the birth of Jesus. I think it's a wonderful time of year to celebrate. Amen. That to celebrate amen it's better to give than to receive there's lots of lessons to be learned during that time and so amen we want to honor the lord jesus with everything we have amen and not only that time of year but every day of the year praise god if you have your bibles tonight matthew the eighth chapter and the fifth verse thankful to see each of you that are here Look around. If somebody's not here, call them and tell them you miss them. Amen. There are those that have been working, had a job opportunities, and I know there are those away for training. Brother Thomas is out working in the field right now. Sister Brandy's in North Houston at some training. Let's pray for them. Amen. Praise God. Those that are training, Brother Thomas Stevenson, he's over in Odessa. Amen. Tonight, Brother Cody DeBarge is home with us, but he, he travels on the road a lot, Pearsall. Amen. Brother DJ travels on his job every day. Let's keep these brethren and sisters in our prayers. Amen. Sister Cynthia travels in home health care. So, you know, when you're on the road, and then I seem to travel just as much as the traveling salesman. That's the truth. And uh, so pray for me when I'm on the road. In fact, my, my good neighbor, Uncle Frank, he told me, he said, you need to buy you a big truck with steel bumpers all the way around it. I said, they don't get good gas mileage. He said, yeah, but as much as you're on the road in Houston traffic, if they hit you, at least it won't hurt you. And those babies need you. <laughs> it's good to be loved today. But the Lord is good to us. I'm going to talk to us tonight. I'm going to start teaching on some, some areas I feel our church needs. And from the Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 5th verse, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i say to this man go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servants do this and he doeth it when jesus heard it he marveled and said to them that followed verily i say unto you i have not found so great no not in israel so great faith no not in israel and i say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. I want to just talk to us tonight. Amen. I'm going to talk to us tonight about being under an umbrella of God's authority. Being under an umbrella of God's authority. Lord Jesus, I thank you tonight for being in this house. I pray, mighty God, that you would anoint these lips of clay anoint our ears to hear help us mighty god to continue to grow in your word and in our understanding and for this we praise you in jesus name amen 
Can we give the Lord a hand clap of worship tonight? Oh, yeah. Amen, 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 amen. He is so worthy. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. Now, I am going to be teaching uh, from some of the lessons that uh, I learned from Brother Greg Godwin, evangelist, teacher, who teaches a concept called the over-under factor. Amen. But really, it talks about, amen, being under the umbrella of God's authority. And so, I want to bring to this church... Uh, some ideologies today and this is bible study so amen i'm going to shift gears and i'm not going to get in a hurry tonight i want to teach if that's all right amen. i believe good teaching is just as good as great preaching amen. in fact teaching will stick with you sometimes a lot more than preaching will and i also believe this and i've told some of our brethren amen it's hard. if you're preaching you need to have some teaching in the middle of your preaching if you want it to be worth anything Amen? Amen. Anybody can get up here and shout and holler. All right. Come on. But if you got something to say, right. that'll stick a lot, that'll go a lot farther. There are, I, I want to talk, and over the next few weeks, I'm going to be dealing with some things. But I believe there's four pillars, amen, to building an apostolic church. There's four pillars. And one of them is, number one, is being obedient. And that includes being submitted, being under the umbrella of God's authority in your life. Second of all, I believe we have to be unified. I believe unity is another pillar of an apostolic church. Thirdly, I believe we have to be doctrinally sound. We got to know what we believe and believe what we know. Amen. 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 And fourth of all, I believe praise and worship, amen, are the key, amen, to getting into the praises of God, the presence of God. Amen. Because he inhabits our praises. Amen. And I, I was, amen, I believe that that is one of the key elements to, to be in an apostolic church today. Those four pillars help us to become what God wants us to become. I was talking with someone today. I got a, a, a call from a salesperson today while I was in the, in the office of the church. And, and uh, she began to talk to me about uh, her product. In fact, I went ahead and I ordered some of the product just because I felt like it was something we could use around Peace Tabernacle. So in a, in a few days, we'll have some misters that we can put into our restrooms and, and uh, you know, take care of that kind of stuff. Amen? But uh, as I was talking to her, Amen. We were talking about the church, and she was getting the church information, and I told her we're Pentecostal. And she said, you know what? I'm from Austin, Texas, and she knew of one of our churches there. And she got very excited. She said, you know, I'm out here in Arizona now, and I, there's not a church like I went to uh, in, in Austin. And I could name the church. I could name the pastor, and many of you wouldn't, wouldn't know who they are. But she went on and on about the worship and the praise that our church, uh, you know, is known for. Amen. Come on, we're the real Coca-Cola. Amen. This is classic Coca-Cola around here at Peace Tabernacle. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You remember a few years ago they changed the formula on Coca-Cola? Right. And it wasn't real popular, was it? But then they came back with a classic Coca-Cola formula. Amen. And it stood the test of time. Can I tell you something? They can imitate us all day long. They can choreograph their dance. They can bounce up and down and jump and wave their banners. But until they get the real stuff, there ain't nothing like the real stuff. You can try to change the formula to make it more popular with the masses. But what the masses will tell you is I want the real stuff. Amen. And so she was talking about Amen. Uh, how she much she enjoyed our church there in Austin. I said, well, we got great churches in, in uh, Arizona. Where do you live, you know? And she says, well, I live in northern Phoenix, you know, in Glendale. And I thank God for modern-day technology. I jumped on my computer. Amen. Took, typed in UPCI. Went to the church locator. Found two churches. One that's with less than three blocks from her house or so, she said. So, uh, you know, I'm thankful today. I, I said, I'm going to tell you, when the, you go to that church, it'll be just like what you found in Austin. Amen. I pray that our churches will always, I want, if you go visit somewhere, 
that it would be as red hot and on fire as it is here. Right. Amen. 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 But now the truth is, is that there are those who are trying to change the formula. Even in our own midst. And it doesn't take light shows. It doesn't take smoke machines. It don't take special effects to have a move of God. It's when God's people call on his name. And humble themselves and pray. Amen. I can't tell you how many people come to peace tabernacle amen and are blessed because amen they remember amen how it used to be and times they travel to other churches they're working hard to get them to a place where they can have a move of God I don't want that to change amen you know we we spent some some finances and we got a screen we got a projector and and we got a cable coming from China and amen it'll be here soon enough and amen and perhaps we'll put the words on the screen but if I see that you're paying more attention to the screen than you are praising God I'll just turn it off amen I want it to be a tool to help us not to hinder us anything that hinders a move of God in this church will go out the door <laughs> well praise God and so I, I tell you all of that because I wanted to build a good platform so you understand where my teaching is going to be coming from over the next several weeks. Because I really do believe, amen, that we have all the elements to be a phenomenal apostolic church that can make a difference in this end time. Amen. Brother Bumgarner doesn't have to travel to conferences, amen, to get good church. I thank the Lord for that. I, I've got ministerial friends, and it's like, you know, the only time they ever have a spiritual move of God is when they go to a conference or somewhere, amen, other than their home church. And if that's the way it is, shame on them. Shame on us. Amen. I, it makes me feel good. Sister, uh, Sister Rodriguez would say, you know, it is, it's always like camp meeting around here. That's the way it should be. It should be like camp meeting around here. And, and some people don't even know what camp. I can remember going to camp meetings. Amen. You went to camp meetings. And when I was a teenager, I know some of the young people are going to say, Brother Bumgarner, that's, that's crazy. But we would go to campground. And at 10 o'clock, you'd go to the youth tabernacle in Oklahoma. And they would have a service. We had our youth service. And the adults would go to the hill. And, and a presbyter or a minister from the section of the day would teach son, that morning. And then you'd take a break. You go get you a soda water, a candy bar, an ice cream. And then about 12 o'clock, you go to the tabernacle for the afternoon teaching. And they would bring a camp teacher. I don't know how it was in Texas. I'm telling you how it was in Oklahoma. And then they had a camp teacher that taught till 2 o'clock. And then at 2 o'clock, they let you go to lunch. And I'll never forget it because the camp, the, the tabernacle's on a hill and the lunchroom was at the bottom of the hill. And when Pharaoh let God's people go, <laughs> it looked like a stampede coming down the side of that hill. Because <laughs> you wanted to get in line, because there would be a line for lunch. And then, you know, you'd have a little playtime, horseshoes, washers, a little softball. And then you were back at church about 6.30 that night having throw down church in the open air tabernacle. Yeah. Now, after a few years, and, and I actually liked the open air tabernacle because you could sit on the outside. And the breeze was blowing in the summertime in Oklahoma. And it's hotter in the tabernacle than it was outside. Then the air conditioning changed everything. Constantly changing everything. But you know what? We, we need to make sure we get to a place where we can have apostolic moves of God. Huh? When's the last times, ladies, you shot, shattered your hair down? You know, Brother Alba went to a place and, and, and he had to make sure he took a picture of a lady's hair bob. You know, he said, it still happens today. And somebody said, what's that? Ladies shouting their hair down. It still happens today. But we have to make sure we get ourselves positioned, amen, around Peace Tabernacle for those kind of services. 
Amen. And fasting, this fasting, what are are we about? Amen. We're about tearing down strongholds. We're about building up faith. We're about, amen, coming at the enemy. Amen. I don't want to fight a defensive battle. I want to fight an offensive battle. I don't want to be on the ropes. I'm not that kind of fighter. I'm a more of a bulldog, put my head down and come straight at you kind of fighter. Huh? Brother Webb, we, we don't have time to be on the fences. We need to be going at the enemy every day. I believe there are hungry people today. Amen. I, I taught a Bible study today, and I, I was so, I got excited. You know, when you start seeing somebody, it's starting to click with somebody. Amen. And I was talking about how, amen, the blood was applied to the doorpost of the house, and the, the angel, amen, passed over the house. But when the Lord applies the blood of Jesus to our life, amen, you know, and, and that allows the sin to pass from us and allows the enemy to have no dominion over us. And the Lord said he'll pass over you. So at judgment, when I have the blood of Jesus applied to my life, amen, he'll pass over me. Hallelujah. Condemnation will pass over you. Judgment will pass over you. Oh, that ought to get somebody excited. And so, with all that said, I want to talk to us for just a little while tonight about, amen, being under an umbrella of God's authority. It's very important, amen, for us to be in a place where we are submitted to to the will and hand of God. Now, in our, our text, we, we read the story of the uh, centurion soldier, and he comes to Jesus, and he asks for the Lord to uh, go and uh, tells him of his servant who is at home sick of the palsy. He's grievously tormented, and Jesus says, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But he says, for I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. Now, he said in verse 9, I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And so the first thing, amen, that we have to realize is that being under something means being beneath something. I have no problem being beneath something when storms are blowing. I, I have no problem having a good carport or a garage when the storms are blowing. Amen. And so, you know, we have to come to the understanding that Amen. He said, I am a man beneath authority, having soldiers beneath me. And now too many times people have a problem, amen, because uh, they, 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 they want to, in our modern day and age, they have a problem being under somebody. Because if you're under somebody's authority, what he was saying there, I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And if I tell one to go, he goeth. And one to, another to come, he cometh. And to my servants do this, and he doeth it. And so, amen, what he is basically saying is, is there's no option there. There is no argument there. Amen. Amen. And if our spirits are aligned under God's umbrella of authority in the church, amen, Amen. God has given us pastors to be that umbrella of authority, to be the watchers for our souls. Amen. I, I don't feel like, amen, it's my place to lord over God's kingdom. I don't feel that way, but I do take the responsibility of being a pastor and a, a, having a headship over Peace Tabernacle. Well, praise God anyhow. And because of that, amen, be, 
And, and the thing is, is in our, in our society, now I believe with all of my heart the Lord called me to Wharton, Texas. I know the Lord told me I was going to pastor here before y'all ever took a vote. Now, I was just waiting to make sure y'all were in the will of God. <laughs> Amen. But, on that, I believe it was a Wednesday night. Just about the time I was going to pull into Sonic in Liberty, Texas to get me an ice cream. Because I didn't know I was a diabetic back then, so it didn't matter. But then to be disappointed because their machines are always closed down. Brother Fisher called me. Brother Kite was with him. And Brother Wooten. And they let me know, hey, them people walk in the Holy Ghost. And so I'm, I know that I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm here because it's the will of God. Amen. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. Amen. And there's no place I, I would rather be. I, I, I love Wharton. I was driving down the city streets the other day just praying for Wharton. Lord, this is a wonderful city. There's wonderful people here. They need to hear this message. Help me, Lord, to be more influential in our city so I can reach somebody for you. Amen. And so I'm challenging myself to become more involved. One of the things that I'm doing, amen, just to, to, to give you an idea is Recently, I think it was the hand of God that did this. I didn't go seeking it. It came to me. But I'm going to be working with the Department of Public Safety, DPS. I'm going to be working with them as a chaplain from Rosenberg to Wharton. Amen. And my motivation, well, praise God. That's all right. My motivation is not, amen. I, believe me, I don't need another position. I don't need another title. You know, I, I, I do have a full plate. But I want to reach our community. I want to reach Needville. I want to reach... Kendleton, I, I mean, we've got to we got to branch out if we're going to reach our area. Amen. East Bernard needs needs to be reached for the Lord, and and Bowling needs to be reached for the Lord. Lane City needs to be reached for the Lord, and we just can't, you know, think that right here is where where everybody's at. We had a visitor, a lady that knows Pentecost, that was here a few weeks ago from Kendleton. Amen. And we've got to do better to reach out to those areas, and so I pray that God can help us do that but you know as as a man of god i am under authority as a pastor i am under authority i'm under uh, you know i have bishops in my life bishop mclean pastor mawala mclean pastor blackburn amen brother fisher brother husband these are men in my life who amen if they speak into my life i will listen to them amen and so we we have to make sure that when we dwell under the umbrella of authority we're under the protection you step out from underneath that protection you're on your own and there's only one way to step out from underneath that protection disobedience to the word of God to the man of God amen and that stems from having an unsubmitted spirit and I want this church to be submitted to the word of God Submitted to the man of God. Hallelujah. Not because, you know, that gives him power. Because what is authority? Authority is power. The right to exercise. The power of rule of government. And so, you know, there's a lot of trust. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of trust between you and myself. I don't take that lightly. I want to be slow to speak when I counsel somebody. Amen. I, I don't want to add to anybody's drama. I want to be a, a voice of reasoning and a voice of peace in the midst of a storm. And so I don't take the apostolic authority that God has given me lightly. I just want the church to understand that and to know that. And when I pray for you, I pray, Lord, amen, keep them in the shadow of your will. Protect them, Lord God. Use them for your glory. Amen. I believe today that God honors that today. You see, we, we need to understand this, this individual, he laid it out so plainly in that there are those that are 
above me and there are those that are under me. And so when we live in that place of walking with the Lord under authority, amen, we are influenced by those that are over us. Amen? Either positively or negatively. We, we, you know, we're influenced by those who are over us and we influence those that are under us. I'm influenced by Bishop McLean. If I have a bar that I want to set for myself as a man of God, who I want to be, Bishop McLean is my bar. Other men of God that I admire, respect, I've already mentioned their names, they are my bar. Those are who I want to be like. Great men of God. Because they have proven themselves. And, and yet, in our church, you know, we're going to influence, I want to influence you in a positive way. As a pastor, as a minister, amen. I, I'm tired of hearing, uh, you know, horror stories about how saints of God, amen, have been mistreated by the one that was in headship over them. You know, and that's not my job. My job is not to wound. My job is to heal. My job is to minister. My job is to pastor. Now, there's a difference between being wounded and being unsubmitted. You know, well, pa that preacher, he just hurt my feelings. Well, what did he do? Well, he told me I didn't need to go somewhere, and I just didn't feel like he knew what he's talking about. Well, to me, that's just an unsubmitted spirit. You need to listen to your pastor. Too many times individuals, amen, take power into their own hand. You've got to be careful about taking authority into your own hand. Because it can come back and, and get you. You see, when we delegate our influence, or it gives us, amen, the, the ability to affect others. And you can only operate in authority if you are under authority. I want that to sink in. As long as I'm submitted to a man of God in my life, I can operate through the spiritual authority. Now it starts, let me just, let's go, let's just get real basic on this, okay? It really starts in the home. We had time tonight, I'd have Jonathan come up here, he knows Ephesians 6 and 1. I know Ephesians 6 and 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And that's really where it starts, this authority thing. Yes. Yes. Listening to mom and dad. Obeying mom and dad. You see, if I learn to obey my parents, then I don't have a problem obeying a boss. You ever work with somebody like that? Huh? When I was working for somebody... Amen. Getting paid. If they told me to do something, I didn't say, well, I ain't getting paid to do that. I was taught you're getting paid to be here. That means whether you're sweeping floors or sitting at a computer or pulling material or, amen, sweating in a truck, whatever it was, amen, I allowed that man authority over me because he hired me to do a job. And that's the way it should be. I had a man tell my father when he was working for him, well, I ain't getting paid to do that. And my dad says, you're getting paid to do whatever we ask you to do. Right. And if you can't do that, then you need to go home. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Praise God. Amen. There's some things that I didn't like doing that I had to do. When I was working in college, trying to go to college and had to pay my way, you know, I didn't enjoy going home to my father and getting hired on with the school district to strip those floors, that old wax. I don't know if y'all had the old floors here, but we had them there, the old, the old tile floors, and you had to strip off three layers of, of the old wax. And, I mean, it'd get all in your shoe, ruin your shoes, ruin your clothes. Am I the only one that's ever been there? And had to go through all of that. 
I didn't volunteer for that. But when they told me to do something, I did it. You see, it starts in our home. When, when you tell your child, go clean your room, too much in our day and age, we have uh, debates. Go clean your room. Well, why do I need to clean my room? And I always tell my child, or children, number one, because I told you to. Not that there needs to be any explanation. Come on now. But see, it starts in our homes. And when, if we're submitted in our homes, then when we get in the real world, we're submitted to our bosses. You see, there's a, there's a nature within all of us that wants to do its own thing, that wants to act its own way. But when I'm submitted to the hand of God, when I'm submitted to the will of God, amen, I don't have any problem with authority. I don't have a problem with authority figures. Amen. I don't have a, a problem with an officer Pulling me over if I've been breaking the speed limit. I don't. He's doing his job. And in that moment, he's a man of authority over me. I've learned this. The nicer I am to them, the more likely I'm to get a warning instead of a ticket. I mean, you know, just play dumb. You know how fast you were going? Man, I, I you know, I, I, I guess I was doing 75. Yep, you were doing 75 in a 65, brother. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you start asking for forgiveness, you know. And, and, you know, Brother Bumgarner's real bad. I get those clergy stickers once a year in the mail from UPCI International. And I just stick them in the window. That way they see the clergy on there. They may have mercy on me. Where are you going in such a hurry, preacher? Well, and most of the time I am going to a hospital, so I'm, oh, I'm going to a hospital. You know. Don't act like you wouldn't do it if you were in my shoes. <laughs> but you know, it's in our nature from the time we're children to kind of just push up against authority. And we have to make sure that in our carnality in the church, we don't allow that to become a part of our character. You know, we have spiritual character that's developed over time. And if we're not careful, amen, the character of our flesh becomes a part of our spiritual character. Now think about that. You see, if we don't kill it, you know, sometimes you have to go back and Dig some things out. Because the Lord filled you with the Holy Ghost and He starts working on you and He changes some things on in you. But he, here's the thing about, about character, okay? You can clean the outside up all day long. We're going to get down to some, some nitty-gritty. <laughs> we can use that word in Texas, nitty-gritty. <laughs> But we can dress the outside up. We can learn how to speak the right way. We can say, hey, bro, hey, doc, hey, brother, hey, preacher, all day long to one another. On the outside. I'm, that's me and Brother Water. We do that a lot. We, we love each other. But you know what? If my character on the inside isn't being transformed, isn't being changed, if I'm not submitting the character on the inside to the will of the Holy Ghost. Now, why is it that people tend, tend to transform on the outside quicker than they do the inside? Simply because people see what's going on on the outside. I can look on the outside and say, well, I've got to keep praying for sister so-and-so, boy. She just ain't got it yet. Or brother so-and-so, man, I seen him at the store that day. And I've been preaching my guts out, Lord, but he still ain't heard the message. And so I'm going to preach to him about you know, pray for his holiness stand. Oh, we see the outward appearance and we judge things based on the outward appearance a whole lot more than we can on the inside. But here's where 
Uh, here where it gets down to the nitty gritty. Your conversation reveals your character. The way you talk. The way you treat others. The way you treat your brother. You treat your sister. The way you talk to your pastor. Now, and I'm not talking about the way you talk to people when everything's good. Come on, it's easy to have honey-tipped tongues when everything's good. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Isn't it, Brother Waddy? You let life go good for you, and I mean you can have honey-tipped words for everybody. Oh, it's good. Life is good. God is good. Pastor's good. But you let a little heat get in your life. You let a little, and that's what the Lord does. He puts a little fire in your life to test your character. And lots of times, he's trying to get that old man out of you so the new man can grow and have new life. Amen. And so he works on us continually. Amen. And so, amen, he, he knew that, amen. In fact, I preached it a few weeks ago, how the Word of God says, the haters of the Lord, you're haters of the Lord. Why? Because you're not submitted. And so, it must mean a lot to the Lord for us to be in obedience to His Word. Hello. And I know that pastor included, we can all work on being more obedient to his word. <coughs> Living up to his expectations. You know, I, I believe today that when we walk in authority of the Holy Ghost and we're submitted and we walk in the authority of the Holy Ghost, things will happen for us. Now Luke 10 and 17, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And I cannot begin to expound on this scripture text any more than Brother Cooley did a few weeks ago. It was wonderful. But when we are submitted to our authority, the disciples were submitted to Jesus. And they came back and they were excited because... Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. That's why I don't worry about devils. I don't worry about unclean spirits. I don't worry about the enemy attacking me. I have too much word in me for the devil to intimidate me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that's what some of us need to understand. I, I'm going to tell you something. The enemy, amen, the spirit of the enemy, the devil, he is submitted, amen, to the spirit of God Almighty. And when I'm full of the Holy Ghost, he has to be submitted. He has to be subject unto me as a vessel. And can I give you some information? Amen. When you're full of the Holy Ghost and you're submitted to your pastor and the will of God, that same devil has to be submitted to you. Amen. Now, I, I, I don't, I, I don't uh, give much measure to people who, you know, to the dark dreams. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't give in to that. It's just not my nature. Gloom and doom don't scare me. Hot red Holy Ghost revival it fires me up, encourages me. Well, praise God anyhow. Because I understand that even the devils are subject unto us through his name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. And Brother Cooley gave us a great understanding of that. Ugly spirits, scorpions, and over all the power, over all the authority 
of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So let people talk. I do. It ain't going to hurt me. Because I'm walking in spiritual authority. I'm under the umbrella of God's authority. Amen. You can throw darts at me, but I'm under the umbrella. Life can throw me all kinds of twists and turns, but I'm under the umbrella. I, I thank God for that today. Amen. Men can attack me. People can say what they want. But the power of the enemy. Amen. I have authority over all the power of the enemy. See, the Lord gives us power over all that Satan is able or possible to do. That's why when sickness attacks the body, amen, you can take dominion over it in the Holy Ghost. And though you're attacked by that sickness, the power of God gives you the authority over that sickness. You just curse the roots of it. See, the power that we have over the enemy, amen, is not of us. You can't whoop any devil by yourself. The sons of Siva let us know that. Amen. Amen. They tried to cast out devils on their own using the, uh, the name of Paul and Jesus, and they end up getting whipped. But our authority, our ability, and where we are comes from the Lord. I have to be under his umbrella of authority if I'm going to operate in the Holy Ghost. You see, position, amen, putting yourself up on a certain plateau or position. you got to be careful. Be careful of, 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 of wanting to put yourself in a position of authority. Brother, Brother Tenney used to say, the higher up the ladder you go, the more everybody knows. You, you, you expose a lot more when you're up there climbing the ladder. I, I, I don't want position just for the sake of position. You shouldn't want position for the sake of position. That was Lucifer's problem. Ezekiel 28, 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee, in the day that thou wast created, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so, thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. He was exalted. He was a man covering. He had within himself workmanship, ministry. He had upon him tabrets or tall for tambourine. And in him he was created. Now I'm giving you some words here. He was created. He was anointed. Is that what it said? Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. Michael was the cherub of war. Gabriel was the cherub of announcement. But here was a cherub with an angelic voice. Thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. And so we understand that Amen. Here was this angelic being, Lucifer. Amen. Who was the choir director of heaven, if you will. 
amen, praise and worship, amen, exalted from him. And I still have this personal theory. This is not scriptural. This is Brother Bumgarner 107. Just so you can write it down in your book. But I've always had this thought. If Lucifer led the choir in heaven, and at his fall, he took a third of the angels with him, then our purpose is, is to take their place. Now, like I said, that's just my personal, that's not scriptural, that's not heaven or hell, that's just something I believe, okay? It's just something in my weird way of thinking. Why? Because God inhabits the praises of his people. And he had angels that praised him, that left him. So what better way to create praise in heaven than to find a people that can praise me not because they have to, uh, not because I'm making them to, uh, but because they want to. What better way, amen, to fill heaven back up with praise and worship uh, than to put some people up there that says, Jesus, I love you, amen, not because I have to. I come to church on Wednesday night not because I have to. Not because somebody tells me to. But Jesus, I love you. I come to praise you. I, I come to lift you up. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen. You know, he was there until iniquity. What is iniquity? Perverseness, unrighteousness, wickedness came into him. And mostly we know that it came into him because he was not submitted. He removed himself from out under the umbrella of God's authority. God had placed him in a position that God wanted him to stay in. And too many times, amen, because of position, we, we can find ourselves, amen, thinking that we are not where we're supposed to be. I'm here, but I should really be over there. No, you should be right here. When God gets ready to put you over there, God will put you over there. Yeah. All right. Now, that's the truth. Yes. Too many times we rush the Lord. We don't need to appoint ourselves to know the will of God. Yes. I've learned this about the will of God. When it's right, my pastor will know it's the will of God. Hey, some, some folks don't know, you know, Brother Fisher, when I first came down here, I don't know if y'all remember, we went eight weeks in revival, and I started coming down quite often to preach. Brother Fisher, about three years before I ever uh, seriously thought about coming here, you know, he said, hey, you ought to consider, you know, I'm about to retire, and I want to get things right, you know. I prayed about it. It wasn't the time of God. It wasn't right. It wasn't right. I said, Brother Fisher, I talked to Bishop McLean. Bishop McLean says, well, I don't know. That's all I needed to know. He said, not right now. I said, that's all I need to know. Brother Fisher, I'm sorry. I love you. I'll preach for you as often as you, as you want me to. But, but right now, it's not for me. It wasn't the right time. My pastor said it wasn't the right time. But then time expired. We, we, I kept coming down. We'd have services. I'd come down on a Sunday and, hey, man, have a great day with Brother Fisher. We'd go to Denny's, eat dinner, and, hey, man, have a great visit. And, but it wasn't, you know, time just went on. Life happened. Met my beautiful wife. Praise God. I thank God for that. Amen. Started preaching out more. Amen. Jonathan was born, and within a month, he was in six different churches. You know, he was traveling around like a little evangelist he is. And, and then the Holy Ghost started moving on me. I started thinking about pastoring. Turned in some resumes. Worst mistake I could ever do is turn in a resume. I said, all right, Lord. Forget the resumes. If it's going to be, if it's going to happen, it's got to be a God thing. Amen. Too many times we make man-made things. Amen. And people get in trouble when they, they do things of their own will. Yes. Yes. Be careful when you start thinking, well, I just thought. Well, I, 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 I know. Amen. You don't know as much as you think you know. Amen. Hello. Yes. Now, I know that might ruffle some feathers, but really... Amen. It's better to listen to a voice that is not sitting right where you're sitting. 
the second time I went to Bishop McLean, said, hey, you know, Brother Fisher and I have talked again. And, uh, and he said, we'll pray. And we prayed, and, and things were clicking along, and things were happening. And, and uh, he said, well, I'm going to hate to see you go. But it's right. So do I have any problem being here tonight? No, because I didn't make, make it happen. I left it in God's hands. Amen. I left it in God's hands. And he opened the doors. He moves upon the hearts of the people. If we will just leave things in God's hands. If you're called of God, leave it in his hands. Continually prepare yourself, but wait upon the Lord. And when the time is right, every door will be open. Opportunities will come. Amen. Praise God. I, you know, I'm thankful tonight. I mean, you know, it, opportunities are, are, are a dime a dozen, it seems. I, I could preach in Honduras. I could preach in the Philippines. I could go to Europe. I mean, I've had vis invitations to go to all of these places. But if it ain't the right time, why waste my time? Because to me, ministry is, if I want to go on vacation, I'll go on vacation. But if I'm going to go minister, I want to be sold out the whole route. I want to be invested. Amen? So we have to be careful that we don't allow, you know, pride begin to fill us, you know, because, hey, the Lord anointed me. I've been used of God. That's all right. Because when you begin to feel like God really used you, remember, he even used a donkey. That's what keeps me humble. Somebody says, well, hey, hey. I realize, I know without a shadow of a doubt, God doesn't need me. God doesn't need to use me. He can use anybody. <laughs> he can talk through a donkey. So we got to be careful about allowing pride to fill us. Like, Man, I am the, the next best thing to slice bread. Why? Isaiah 14 and 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the Most High. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit he he promoted himself and, and i have a, a lot of notes i've got a lot of things that i could cover amen and I, i'm not even half done so we'll continue this next week but the thing is is amen it was his pride it was his trying to take authority into his own hands because his authority did not come because of who he was but it was according to his location. Yes. That's why even I tell leadership in our church, be careful. Be careful when you're in leadership. Amen. You're there as a servant leader. Amen. We're here to serve one another. All right. Amen. I understand as pastor, amen, as chief lead servant, I'm here to serve everybody. I don't just serve one group or this group or that group. I serve everybody. I serve children's ministry. I serve youth ministry. I serve PT cruisers. Amen. I serve the music. I serve everyone as pastor. Because the chief among you will be what? Servant of all. Amen. I thought one of y'all were calling me the other morning. 4.30. My phone rang. It was from Palmdale, California was a Skype call. So I didn't know who it was. But I would have gotten up. I would have answered that call. I would have tried to reach out to you even at 4.30 in the morning. Why? Because that's, my, that's where God's put me. Not so much over, but under. Because when I'm under God's authority... Amen. I am here because he put me here. 
So any authority that comes, comes because of Him. See, that's what we have to understand. Lord, the authority that I have comes from You. The authority to operate in the gifts of the Spirit comes from Him. So if God is using you in the gifts of the Spirit, recognize, hey, they come from God. Man cannot bestow gifts upon you. I can't bestow any kind of gifts on you. But because of Him, He puts us in position. But when we try to lift ourselves out of the position that God has put us in, be careful. Because you may be moving out from underneath that umbrella of God's authority. And we really need to stay there. Why? Hey, I want to stay under the protection of the Most High. I want to I be under that shadow. Don't you want to be under that shadow tonight? Because I want to make sure that, hey, when the enemy comes against me, I have power to speak against it. Amen. Lucifer became the devil when he attempted to lift himself to a higher level. I've mentioned it. I think Brother Fisher's even mentioned it about Brother McLean preaching, teaching. How long will it take you to become the devil? Here was Peter. One minute he's saying, you know, you're the Christ. You're the Messiah. Flesh and bone has not revealed this unto thee, Peter, but my Father. And just a few verses later, he's talking about his death and Peter says, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to allow it to happen. Peter moved himself out of position. And what did Jesus say? Get thee behind me, Satan. So we have to be careful, amen, that in our living for God and walking in the Spirit, that we walk in the Spirit with a right mindset, that we stay where we're supposed to stay and live where we're supposed to live and be who we're supposed to be. Amen? It's about 5 till 9, and I really crammed a lot in tonight's lesson, folks. I, I, could, I could go on another hour easily, but for time's sake, I'm going to let God's people go. But when we're living for God, if we're going to be an apostolic church, then the apostolic church understands, I have a Savior above me, and I have those that I need to influence under me. That's why it's imperative as seasoned saints of God. How do new babes in the Lord grow? How do our own children learn? Our children learn from watching us. Our children learn from us telling them, don't do that. Sit down. Go there. Eat this. Here's a fork. Here's how you eat with a fork. And here's how children of the Lord grow. When seasoned saints of God Amen. Know where they're supposed to be. And they help the younger ones. Huh? N not condemn them. Not beat them up. Not try to tell them how to live for God. Show them. Amen. That's what leadership's all about. And when we're submitted to the hand of God. Amen. He can move in our church. Is that right? When we're submitted to what God wants to do in Peace Tabernacle, then He has no problem using this church to minister to our city. That's the truth. So my prayer tonight is that, Lord, search me. And I'm asking you as a saint of God, say, Lord, search me. Lord, if I've allowed any rebellious spirit to come into my nature, if I've allowed any thoughts to come against the man of God, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Because, you know, God has a way of spanking us. I can count on one hand the times my father really gave me a whooping. You know, Brother Waddy and I were talking, Sister Phyllis, about boys and, and uh, Jessica. 
you know, he said, he gave her a few swats. He gave her more swats than whoopings. He only gave her a couple of whoopings. So there's a difference between a, a spanking and a whooping. My dad didn't give me a lot of spankings, but he gave me a few whoopings. And I remembered each of them. I can tell you the story that went with them. And when I was in that town next door and I started booing the man of God, I'd never seen him get so fired up. Because it takes a lot to get him fired up. But when we got home, I got a whooping. I'll never boo another preacher in my, all my days. I don't care whether he, he's 69 and I'm 42. He may step up and whoop me again. But he taught me something there in the physical. Because he saved me some grief in the spiritual. Because if I dishonor a man of God, God can give us a whooping. And I don't want his kind of whoopings. I'm telling somebody tonight, I just feel it. We, we, I want to, the four pillars of our church, amen, to be, Lord, we're obedient. We're under your shadow. We're unified together. We're doctrinally sound. And, Lord, we're going to praise you when others may not praise you. Amen. We're not just going to be spectators. We're going to be participators. Amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I